Hi, it's Rob from the Brush and Bulkham. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to paint the Indomitus Chaplain. First up, we're going to be using Citadel Mournfang Brown. We're going to use this to do his holster and his pouches, and also the leather belt. Impressed with this model. Really, really enjoy painting it. It's kind of a return to the more traditional looking chaplains after the initial one that they released. I really do like the original Primaris Chaplain they released. But I do like the look of this guy, his pose and his armour. Just really, really cool miniature. Now we're going to be using Citadel Ricard Flesh. I'm going to use this to do the parchments on the purity seals. Also the robes going down the front there. And the skull on the little halo behind his head. And the last part you may see me use a bit of Mournfang Brown on the straps of the book, but on closer inspection it looks like little bits of parchment with a purity seal over the top of the book to hold it in place. So I'm going to re-go over those with this Rakarth flesh while I do this layer. Now I'm going to use a little bit of Citadel Corn Red. I'm going to be using this to do all of the little purity seals on him and also the shaft of his crozius. Also doing this leather book here. We'll be using different shades and things like that to make it stand out against the purity seal which is above it. So that should give it a different look. Now it's onto Citadel Retributor armour. Now because of the style of armour that he's got and all the decorations, there's a lot of Retributor armour on this. I think it's one of the most prominent colours on him because of his black armour. It does stand out very, very well. Because of all that decoration, it does really make his armour stand out. So if you're using him in maybe Raven Guard or Black Templar's army, then this gold should set him out from the crowd. I'm going to use a little bit of Citadel Cadian Flesh Tone to do his skin. Not too much of that on display. About two thirds of a head. And that's it. I do like these chaplains who have the half metal head. It used to be the plastic skull that you got for one of the older kits that I used on a chaplain years ago which is a really really good look for a bionic head now it's a little Vallejo Model Air Chrome I'm going to be using this to do a few of the smaller details like the side of his bionic head some of the metal work on his pistol also the little chain holding the kind of crusade emblem on the front of his robes there. You can see from the way this goes on, it's a really, really good paint. It's very thin, very smooth, very hard to put too much on. It's got loads of pigments in there, so it covers any colour. So it's one of my favourite metallic ones. Now I'm going to use a little bit of Citadel Mephist on red. I'm going to be using this to do his shoulder pad. Now depending on the chapter that you're doing, obviously depends on what colour this shoulder pad's going to be. But as he's going to be a Knight of the Chalice Chaplain, you're going to paint this in the nice red colour of the Knight of the Chalice armour. We're going to start working on the shades now. And the first one we're using is Citadel Reichland Flesh Shade. I'm going to use this to do the skin. Very quick layer this. You want to get enough to fill in those details but not too much that it completely obscures them. Next up it's going to be Citadel Seraphim Sepia. We're going to be using this on the robes, on the parchments and on the bones that are on his chest there. Also the skull behind his head will get Seraphim Sepia.
Next up, it's going to be Citadel Duty Violet. And we're going to use this on his shoulder pad. Make sure you get that around the edges, just so you get that nice shade in. And also on the book cover. Making sure that you leave that purity seal free, because we're going to be using a different colour on that. You also want to do the shaft of the crosius as well. Give that a good coat so you get the Trucci Violet and all of the crisscrosses. That's going to be Citadel Agrax Earth Shade. This is going to be to go onto all of the gold. And there is a lot of gold, as I said earlier. But it really does make the miniature stand out. It looks really, really cool. I'm very impressed with the miniature itself. Once you've got all the Agrax Air shade on, it's on to the next colour. Next up, Citadel Carrowberg Crimson. We're going to use this just to do all of the wax sections on the purity seals. There's quite a few. There's three on the inside of his backpack. You've got a couple on the outside of the backpack and also one on his absorber pistol there. Now we're going to be using Citadel Nuln Oil, the gloss version this is. If you don't have the gloss, the normal version works fine. It doesn't really matter too much. You're just going to be putting that so it fills in, gives the details on all those metallic parts. Or all the silvery metallic parts, I should say. Like so. Now it's Citadel Null Oil Normal. I'm going to use that just to do the leather parts on him, so it's his belt. I did say earlier on that his uh, pouches and holster. I've done the same way as the belt, but he's not actually got any, so just the belt with that. So we're going to start building up the gold again now. So we're going to start with Citadel Retributor Armour, which is returning to the base colour. You're going to be applying this and leaving the Agrax Air Shade in the recesses. You also want to think about if the gold is on the underside of anything. So there will be a lot of shade there, you don't really want to reapply the Retributor Armour to that, you want to leave it so there is shaded still under there. And this just adds a bit more of a natural shade to it when you're looking at the miniature. We're now moving on to Citadel Liberator Gold to highlight the Retributor Armour. With this, you want to be thinking about where the light's going to catch the gold. So, obviously you're not going to have any on the undersides. You're going to be picking out the main areas, maybe covering about 50% of the area on the top surfaces that you've done on the Retributor Armour. Just to give that the brighter colour of the gold, make those ridges and surfaces stand out. I'm going to do this on all of the gold on the miniature. As the final gold highlight, we're going to mix a little bit of Vallejo Model Air Chrome with Citadel Liberator Gold. We're just going to do an extreme highlight on these golden parts. Now this is going to be doing mainly edges, so we're doing like the tips of these wings here. And all the little detailed areas just to give hints of a really extreme highlight on those parts. And this is just to make those edges stand out as if they really are catching the light. Once you've finished the gold, it's on to the next colour. So next up, we're going to be working on his shoulder pad. We're going to start with Citadel and the Fist on red. You're just going to reapply a nice smooth layer of that to the shoulder pad. Leaving that Drucci Violet in the recesses. So that you have the darkened edge to it. You can kind of feather that into the edge, just to give that a bit more of a smooth transition from the Drucci Violet to the Mephist on red. Now it's going to be some Citadel Evil Sun Scarlet. I'm going to use this to highlight the shoulder pad. So you're probably only going to do about the top half of the shoulder pad. 
Now thinking about the light coming straight down, you're not going to have that going just on the top half of the actual shoulder pad because the shoulder pad's at an angle. So you're then going to have that highlighted part across the top when it's angled. Now I'm going to use a little bit of squig orange just to do a final highlight on the top there. You don't really need this too much to be honest, but I just wanted to give a little extra highlight because that's where it'd be catching the light a little bit more. And now we're going to move on to Citadel Corn Red. So we're going to start reapplying this to the Crozius and also to the Purity Seals as well. Now you do want to be very careful with this so that you're just painting the actual diamond shapes and not getting any into the recesses. If you do get any into the recess, you can just go over that slightly with a little bit of Juicy Violet and get the darkness back in there. Now I'm going to use a little bit of Citadel Wasdaka Red. And again, we're going to be highlighting the Purity Seals and also the diamonds on the Crozius. Also working on the book here as well. Not giving the book a smooth coating of the Corn Red and the Wasdaka Red. It's a bit more slapdash and a bit more rough and ready. That's just to give the leather effect a bit more of a mottled look. So when you move on to the handle of the Crozius, you want to be doing about the top half of each of the diamonds. You'll see the finished result once you get to the next part. Now we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Pink Horror just to highlight the purity seals and also the diamonds on the Crozius. Now for the diamonds on the Crozius, I'm just doing the edge highlight on the top two edges of the diamonds. So you're doing a kind of inverted V on the top of these diamonds. That just gives a little bit more of a highlight and makes them stand out quite well. With those done, it's now going to be back to the face. Going to use a little bit more Cadian Flesh Tone just to reapply the base colour. Now, when you're doing this, you want to make sure that you're leaving the right on flesh shade in the recesses, and also with this layer, you want to add any creases to the forehead or anything expressions and things like that that you want to do. Just make sure that you use the right on flesh shade as the darker area, and then do thin lines as though there is raised areas in his creased brow. I've added a little bit of white to the Cadian Flesh Tone. We're just going to highlight that. As usual, it's going to be about maybe 50% of the areas that we've covered with the Cadian Flesh Tone. We're going to cover with this mix. You can see the lines under his cheekbone there. I've highlighted the bottom part of it because the top part will be shaded from his cheekbone. And then the lines off to their left are highlighted from the top because there's nothing above them to shade them. Also highlighting them creases on his brow. Then we're going to add a little bit more Vallejo White to the previous mix. And we're going to do maybe about 50% of the previous highlight with this one as well, just to give that one final highlight on the skin. Like so. Now it's Vallejo White. We're going to do his eye and his teeth. So his eye, you want to hold the brush and drag it away from the point from one side of his eye to the other. It's always easier going away from the nose so you haven't got anything blocking the brush there. Now we're going to use some Vallejo Black and just put a tiny spot in his eye there. That was a bit of a warm, breezy day when I was filming this. So the paint was drying on the end of the brush, something wicked. It takes a few dabs to get that on there.
Now we're going to use Vallejo White. This is where we're actually going to do the teeth. So you want to get a tiny, tiny little bit on the brush, and then you're just going to be dragging the brush down the teeth from the top and up on the teeth on the bottom. And this is just so that you're not catching any of that white on the lip as it comes away from there. Now you want a really, really small amount of paint on the brush because it's so easy to fill in the gaps in these teeth because they do have individual teeth. So it's a lot easier to mess that up. So just be really careful. You should be okay with that. So now we're going on to Citadel Rakarth Flesh. We're going to reapply colour to the bones on his breastplate. We're also going to reapply it to the robes and also the scrolls attached to the purity seals. So you want to make sure you're leaving the sepia in the recesses here. And if you can, just try and work the Rakarth flesh towards the recesses so you haven't got a sharp, straight line where the shade meets the Rakarth flesh. So now I'm going to use some Citadel Ushabti bone. We're actually going to work on the bones on the ribs here. Get these parts done before we work on the robes and the parchment. So you're painting about the top 50% of these bones. Like so. Now we're going to add some white to the Ushabti bone. We're just going to do a highlight on these bones, maybe covering about 50% of the previous highlight, just to give them a little bit of lightness. Like so. So now we're going to go back to Citadel Rakarth Flesh and add some Vallejo white to it. And we're going to start working on the robes and the parchment. So all you're going to do here is you're going to highlight the robes, leaving some of the Rakarth flesh showing around the edges of it. And highlighting the crests of the creases, the crests on the material. And then doing the same on the parchments from the purity seals as well. So you're mainly highlighting the top and the ridges of those areas on the purity seals, or parchments of. Now we're going to add some more Vallejo White to the previous mix and we're going to do a smaller highlight on the robes and the purity seals. So again you're probably going to be covering about 50% of the previous highlight. You can really see the shape of the robes and the purity seals coming out with this layer. So we're just going to finish these off and then move on to the next layer. Next up we're going to use Citadel Rakarth Flesh once more and we're going to do the skull on his power pack there. We could have done this with the bones on his chest piece. But I did completely forget about it. You can see there I put a bit too much paint on the brush and blocked off two teeth instead of just doing the one. But if you're quick with your brush when you do that you can wipe the paint off the brush and then use it in a downward stroke to get the paint out of the grooves, but you do have to be quick. If you're not quick enough to get it out when you've knackered the teeth, just use a little bit of sepia and put that between them, which will be fine. With the Ricard flesh done, we're now going to use some Citadel Ushabti bone, and we're going to highlight the skull. You're going to be thinking about where the light's hitting it again. So top edges, and ridges, and creases, and around details and that kind of thing. Anywhere where you think the light's going to catch to make things stand out, that's fine. Like so. Now I'm going to add some white to the Ushabti bone. And highlight that skull at the back there. Again, it's the same with previous highlights. 
you just really get in the areas that are going to be catching the light. So you think of the light shining down on that skull, where the light's going to hit, and picking those areas out. Now we're going to work on his belt using a little bit of Citadel Mournfang Brown. It's not really too much to do with this, there's not too much of the belt that shows. Be just very, very careful. You're mainly doing the top and the bottom edge of it. Now we're going to add a little bit of Citadel Rakarth Flesh to the Mournfang Brown. We're going to start adding some rough highlights to it. When I say rough highlights, you're mainly doing up and down strokes with the brush just to get that ragged look as though the leather belt has been scraped and scuffed. I'm going to add a little bit more of a calf flesh to the previous mix and do that once more just to get the final highlights on that belt. So now we're going to start working on his armour again. We're going to use Vallejo Black. And we're just going to go over all the parts where we've spilt paint onto the normal black areas of his armour. Now if you're getting close to any detail you might want to use a really thin brush just so you can pick out the black sections of armour without spreading too much over details that you've already painted. So I'm using a medium layer brush here but it's one that's got a very good point on it. If you need to use something smaller then please do. Now we're going to use some Vallejo Black just to do the text on these parchments. I'm just mainly doing horizontal lines with the odd wide triangle to represent a little aquila or maybe the little shape of a chalice or a blood drop. You can do a little bit of different coloured text if you want to do on here. You can do quite a lot. I'll link up a video that I've done on doing scroll work and stuff like that that I did on Saint Celestine. There's loads of different ideas of things you can do on the scrolls there. So this is how he's looking so far. What we're going to use next is a little bit of Vallejo German Grey. Or if you've got an equally dark grey, you can use that too. We're just going to paint the top surfaces of the black armour. So if it's more than, say, 50% down the side of his leg or his arm, you don't want to be painting that. Just the top part that would be catching a light. Obviously, it'll be a lot darker on the underside of an arm because of the shade. So you just leave that black. Next up, Citadel Mechanicus Standard Grey. You're going to use this to highlight the edges on the black armour. Now you're not going to be adding the Mechanicus Standard Grey to the seals or the rubbery bits between his armour plates just because I want to keep those quite dark. It makes them not blend in with the armour, as obviously the armour is dark, black and grey. So you don't want to put the Mechanicus standard grey on there, just so you can differentiate between the panels and the sections between. So now I'm going to use a little bit of Vallejo Model Air Chrome again. We're just going to pick out all these bolts on his armour. Well, there is quite a few of them, so if you finish this part and move on to the next, then you realise you've missed a few. Obviously go back and just pop them on. And also use this layer to touch up any bits that you might have gone over on the silver. Now we're going to use a little bit of Citadel and the Fist on red. And we're just going to paint up his eye here. Like so. 
Now we're going to add a little bit of Vallejo White to the Mephiston Red. I'm just going to do a little highlight on the bottom left of that lens. Now I'm going to add a little bit more white to the previous mix. I'm just going to do another little highlight on the bottom left of the eye lens there. Like so. Now we're just going to add a little bit more white to the previous mix and do another highlight on that bottom left corner there. Like so. Next up, just a little bit of pure Vallejo white. I'm going to do a tiny thin sliver of a highlight on the bottom left hand side. And we're going to do a little tiny white spot on the top right of the lens, just to give the impression that light is reflecting on that lens there. Like so. Next up, I'm going to use a little bit of Citadel Avalon Sunset. I'm going to do the tube running down the side of his head. It's in such a place that you can't really see it too well when I'm recording here. Bit of dodgy camera work. So with that done, we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Uriel Yellow. We're just going to highlight the top edge of that tube there. Like so. Now we're going to use some Vallejo Black, just to put some stripes on that tube. I'm doing a slight angle here, so that where one stripe goes over the back and underneath, it joins on with the other. So you get that nice stripey tube effect. We're now going to use some Vallejo Black to do the Knights of the Chalice symbol on his shoulder pad. I'll link up here a full version of how to paint that symbol using the same methods I'm using here. How to freehand that. The basic rough shape done, we're now just going to shape it a little bit more with a little bit of Citadel and the Fist on red. Just sort out these bottom parts. So obviously now that we've highlighted the shoulder pad, we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Evil Sun Scarlet. We're just going to do the line at the top of the chalice using that, and then shape the top part of the chalice using Evil Sun Scarlet. Now I'm just going to put a little name on his shoulder pad there. I'm going to use some Vallejo Black. And I've painted up this scroll work using the same colours as I used on the parchment for the purity seals. I'm just using the Vallejo Black to add the name to it. So obviously being Blood Angel's descendants, he's got a Greek sounding name. So I've been looking up different names to choose them for different characters. like so. And the final thing that we're going to do is going to use a little bit of Citadel Shade Caroberg Crimson. We're just going to use this on the skin around his bionic head just to give that a bit of a raw and sore look. Which might explain why he's very very angry. Like so. And that is the finished Chaplin from the Indomitus box. It really is a stunning miniature, loads of amazing details on it. Really good fun to paint and you can really go to town on it if you want to. But there it is finished. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video and if you have please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future content. 
Also, think about subscribing to some the social media link below. Thanks very much. If you like the channel and you'd like to support us, please feel free to buy us a coffee at our coffee page, link below. Thanks very much.